Alrighty, here we are. Well folks, thank you for joining me. Now today is a special uh, little show here where we're going to cover the basics of Adobe Fresco. Now Fresco just had its version 2.0 release at Adobe Max this year. Not sure if you were able to catch that. And uh, there was a little demo done by myself and my good pal Jin Jin Sun where we showed off some of the latest features. And we had a lot of um, questions. People said, you know, I, I have been aware of Fresco for a little while, but never really got to understanding um, how to use it, and therefore haven't had a chance to really dive in and play around very much. Um, well, today I'm here to show you the very, very basics, the ins and outs, the lay of the land for this spectacular illustration, drawing and painting application that we have. Now, a couple things right off the bat to clear up about Adobe Fresco. Adobe Fresco is a free app. Yes, there is a Creative Cloud subscription model version of the app that you can have with your uh, Photoshop subscription. There's a bundle we're offering right now, or if you have a Creative Cloud subscription for the entire suite of products, of course, Adobe Fresco is included as well. But if you have neither of these, don't worry. Adobe Fresco is free. Just go to the App Store and download it. If you have a Windows device, there are many Windows devices that now support Adobe Fresco as well. If you have an iPhone, you can use Fresco on your iPhone. So the free version of the app has everything you need to create high resolution, professional, excellent illustration work, export it as a layered file if you wish, as a PDF if you wish, a JPEG, a TIFF, um, whatever you need. And <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm drinking my rasa, which always makes my throat a little bit scratchy. Uh, anyway, yes, it has everything you need to make an incredible piece of artwork for nothing. You don't have to pay for it. Um, gosh, isn't that amazing? So let's get right to it. I'm going to share my screen here, and um, I'll say hi to some folks in the chat before we do much more here. I'll just uh, show my iPad there. You can all see that. I've got the Fresco home screen pulled up because we're going to start with that. But first... Good morning, we have Tim, nice to see you. Hi, Andreas. Hey, Mercurial, nice to see you as well. And Sean and Reverb Mike. Every time I see Reverb Mike's name in the chat, I just think, Reverb Mike, that's the coolest name. That is really cool. All right, gang, well, hey, why don't we get cooking right now? And we're gonna open it up here. We have the home screen. And uh, I wanna start by just giving you a little explanation for how this home screen is meant to work with you as your home base as the place that you come to get things kick-started every time you launch Fresco. And what's great about this is if you've used Photoshop um, or other apps that we have, you'll notice that there is a consistency here. This is a very familiar in environment for you, where what you see is your recent documents. These are the documents that you most recently worked on. Now, of course, if you're launching the app for the first time and you have no recent cloud PSDs, those are cloud Photoshop documents that you've done in Photoshop, um, then the recent area is going to be blank. There'll be nothing there. But what's really neat is anything that I create in Fresco and save as a cloud PSD, which by the way, in Fresco happens automatically. I don't have to do anything. When I close a document, it's already been saving in the background all along and it is saved right there to the cloud, which means if I open Photoshop, my recent documents will show all of those fresco, fresco documents as well because they are synced automatically and they're part of that uh, that pile of work that I can carry with me to any device, to any machine, anywhere in the world. All I have to do is sign in with my Creative Cloud account and boom, my work travels with me so I never lose it. So that's what we're seeing here with our recent documents, okay? Now, I can just uh, scroll through here. You'll see lots of art, but if I want to see all of the work that I've created, not just the recent stuff, but stuff that goes back, you know, years. I can tap on your work. Up in the top left corner there, we have home and then your work. Now, when I tap on your work, I'm gonna see all of not only the illustrations that I've done in Fresco for however long I've been using the app, right? But also anything that, um, you'll see here some artwork by my kids even, but anything that I've done in Photoshop as well and saved as a cloud PSD, that's going to show up here because I can open Photoshop documents in Fresco, okay? And all my layers are retained and all that info is good to go. Um, so yes, I can just scroll on through and you see this goes back forever. So anything I'm looking for, there it is. I can find it in my work. 
I'll tap back on this home icon here at the top left again. Now I want to talk about some other things. When you want to make a piece of art, well, you want to make it a certain size, right? Now we have a few preset sizes you'll see up here at the top where it says start a new document. Custom size, a square, the current screen size, both in landscape and in portrait. But if I tap on custom size, okay, I'll do that. You'll notice we have some other presets for you that are really handy. So for digital art, we have what you're seeing here. And anytime you want to modify one of these, you can just tap on the little arrow that is next to the name of that format. And it gives you options for new size for that format, as well as uh, switching to portrait. Now, what I love about this new size from format is you're basically taking the proportions, right? The ratio of height to width, and it's going to lock those in for you. And then you can make it larger or smaller, which is really handy. We also have some for print. Okay. If you're a comic book artist, we have a comic book page. It's a standard comic book page there, postcards and a tabloid poster. Yes. A poster 18 by 24 inch, 300 DPI poster right here in Fresco. And I should mention right out of the gate, that there are no layer limits with this app. So you just basically keep making layers until your iPad breaks. That's really kind of how it works, all right? Um, now, I don't want your iPads to break, but I'm telling you, that's kind of how it works. All right, we also have saved sizes. Now, you notice I haven't saved any sizes. I've been perfectly fine with the, the presets that we already have in the app. But any custom size document that you wanna make or any of the templates that you use in and out every single day, and you don't want to go to the trouble of having to go and find them, you can use saved sizes. Okay, maybe you have a special project you're working on where everything is three inches square. You go ahead and save that size, and then you can just keep opening that up again when you need a new document at the same size. So that's mighty convenient. Alrighty, now, <clears throat> let's see, any questions so far? We have, ba -ba 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 -ba. what's the hashtag? I don't know what that means, sorry gang. Um, all right, we have da, 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 da. Spencer Nugent, heard you're a pretty decent artist. Well, that's an understatement, gang. Spencer's fantastic, and he does do stuff for us all the time. Oh, never mind. You guys are being sarcastic. Sorry, I missed that. All right. Um, you want to make a mural the size of your living room wall, so you're all good. Well, guess what, Reverb Mike? What you could do is create the art right here, and then you can pop it on over to Capture, and generate a vector version of it, and then you can make it as big as you like. And yes, Capture is also a free app. Pretty cool, right? I'm gonna talk a little bit about Capture in this stream as well, by the way. Now, if right on the right side of the screen, what you'll see is I have my options for whether I want to build my image thinking in terms of measurement with inches or centimeters or millimeters, right? And then I can also then set the uh, specific width and height. The little lock icon here is going to tell me whether or not I want um, those numbers to change with one another so that if I increase one, the other one will increase accord accordingly and so on. Um, and then of course you have your print size. Now make sure that when you're thinking about working in print that you're working at 300 dpi and when you're setting, for example, the physical dimensions of the document. So if I were to set over here my unit of measurement to inches and I'd say I want this to be an 8 by 10 inch document. Okay, so I will pop that in there. Now I wanna make sure that I take my DPI up to at least 300. Some people work in 450, others work in higher numbers than that. Um, but this is just to make sure that I get that size just right. All right, now, so we've talked about making a new document. We see that our recent work is here. I wanna pop over here to the very top right corner where you see new and upcoming features. This is really handy. Every time you release something new, you're gonna see a little summary of what's new in there. But the best thing is here at the bottom, look at this, coming soon to Fresco. Now, this is where we are making Fresco an application for you, by you, because we take your suggestions for features and we say, hey gang, what is it you wanna see in the app? We will build it, right? Now, how does this work? Of course, if one person out of 10,000 makes a suggestion, for brushes that are maybe going to do something like uh, create um, little little rainbow reflections uh, or something like something specific like that and, and nobody else asks for it well honestly that's not going to happen what we need is for people to really make their voices heard and we look at the most requested 
features we know the community is asking for, clamoring for, and then we build them into the app. So you can see already what we have coming. Graph grids, drawing aids, perspective drawing, fantastic. Symmetry drawing, adjustment layers, motion. Holy cow, I wish I could show you what some of the motion stuff is because that is whew, pretty advanced and pretty innovative. Pardon me while I take a sip of my Rasa. The stream is not brought to you by Rasa. I'm not getting paid for this. It's just, I love it. All right. So there you go, suggest features. See that little option right there? You just tap on that and boom, it's gonna take you to this uh, page where you can make a direct suggestion for us and say, hey, this is what I want in Fresco, okay? So please take advantage of that so that we can build what you want. This is built for you by you, right? Well, I think we should get started with some drawing and painting. So I am going to just go with a simple current screen size document up here under start a new document. It's the third one from the left. And this just gives me a nice full canvas right there. Now when you launch Fresco for the first time and you see all these tools, if you're not familiar with the tools in Photoshop, some of this might look unfamiliar to you and you say, well, I'm not sure what I'm looking at. If you've used other drawing and painting applications, some of this will look familiar to you because most or if not all drawing and painting applications that exist borrowed or designed their user interface from Photoshop back in the day. That's sort of become like the gold standard for icons that we understand for certain tools or the arrangement of the palettes and, and whatnot. So some of these things might look familiar to you. Um, now, I am going to go one by one around the perimeter of our screen here and explain to you what we are looking at. So at the very top of your screen, you're gonna see the title of your document right here. Now I just tapped on it, okay? If you want to change it from untitled with the date, not a very exciting title, um, you need only come over and tap on it. And look at that. It says you can rename it. All right, so I think I'll do that right now. We'll just say Fresco Demo. I say done, and now it's been changed. Simple as that. All right, now we're gonna come back to this in a moment when I tell you one of the cool features that we have built in in the last few months in the app having to do with version history, okay? All right, now as I make my way sliding on over to the right, okay, I'm going to see two arrows. We'll get to those in a minute. Here's a really handy thing. Now, if you're just starting out with Fresco, this is one of the greatest things we have because you have tutorials as well as a tour. Now, this tour, let me tell you, gang, if you just do the tour, you're going to be set. You're going to be drawing and painting, lickety split, no problem. If I tap on take the tour, it'll open up a piece of art for you and allow you to work right on that art as it guides you from tool to tool. Okay? It is extremely handy. I highly re recommend you check it out if you're new to the app. All right, so back to where we were. Uh, now, so in addition to the tour, you also have the option to view gestures. Because Fresco works on touchscreen devices, you can use your hands, your fingers, to do all kinds of things, okay, when you're working with the app. And I will explain those as we go. But if you ever forget, what is it that I have to do with my finger to make it zoom? What is it I have to do with my finger to call up another tool or to pull up my eyedropper and, and things like that, right? Well. Here you have a nice, handy cheat sheet, always available to you right there. And again, that's right here under this little question mark, uh, the gestures. You also have settings that tell you about the touch shortcut. Now the touch shortcut is this handy little circle right here at the bottom right of my screen. So I'm kind of moving that around so you can see it. If you just touch that with your finger, you can move it anywhere you want on the screen. And I want you to think of it as kind of like a magic extra uh, tool switcher for you. What it allow you to do is quickly do certain actions, switch to certain tools, um, simply by tapping on it, all right? And that's what's handy about these touchscreen devices. I can use my, my stylus as one kind of input, but I can also use my hands, right? And so that's what this is for right here. Now, if you ever forget what the touch shortcut does, again, here we have a nice list of things that it does for you, okay? And you can actually, if you choose, you can make some changes to that as well, all right? You can customize it a little bit. But this is just a really handy thing to be able to see. 
Okie dokie. Alrighty, now, what else do we have? Keyboard shortcuts. So you might say, well, why in the touchscreen device do we have keyboard shortcuts? Well, a lot of folks use their keyboard to switch tools, okay, between brush and selection and things like that. Um, and we have made it possible to use Fresco with a keyboard. If you have a Bluetooth keyboard with your iPad, you can do it that way. If you're working on a Windows device, you can use your keyboard. So yes, you can use your keyboard shortcuts for Fresco as well, very nice. Um, and then we have online help. So we go straight to the help page for Fresco. And importantly, report a bug. You know, of course, this is built by humans. This is an app that is built by humans and occasionally some error will occur. And when that happens, you can report it to the team and then we can fix it. We try our best. We go through hundreds and thousands of tests to see if there's any possible combination of actions that you would make in the app um, that would trigger some kind of a weird behavior. But if we miss one, you can catch it for us. We will fix it, not to worry. And of course, again, we have that nice suggest a feature option. We've put it in there as well to be sure that people have an easy way to do so. Alrighty. Okay, now moving on to the right from there, we have your option to share your work or to export your work. And I will cover that later. And then finally, over here on the right, we have settings for the app. Now, a couple of really simple things. If you look at the settings here, you have some basics, all right? Um, now we have the ability to rotate and flip the canvas. That's handy. Uh, and then you have whether or not you want to use the touch shortcut at all. Maybe you don't want to touch that thing. You don't want to use it. You don't want to accidentally trigger it. It's not for you. You can simply disable it, okay? Which is very nice. You can turn on the artboard preview. Um, and that's where we, if you have a photograph or something that you've decided to pull off of your canvas and use for reference, you can choose to have that be visible, even if it's outside of the, the, the boundaries of the canvas, which is pretty nifty as well. But if you really want to dive deep, you tap on app settings at the bottom. And here you have all kinds of things that you can do to customize Fresco for yourselves. Some of you are right-handed, some of you are left-handed. If you're a lefty, you may wish to move the toolbar over to the right. And see that? It just switches immediately. Um, or you may wish to change the appearance of Fresco to a light interface instead of the dark interface. That might work for you as well. Certainly a nice option. Totally up to you. Um, you have your settings where if you do a file um, export of your document and you don't want to do anything fancy, you just want to immediately export it with one tap, you still want to have a format that's preset for you that works. So by default, the file format is a JPEG, but you can also send, as you can see, these options, a PNG, a PSD, which means you're gonna keep all your layers intact if you're sending it, right? Even on a quick one tap or a PDF. Alrighty. Now here's an interesting one I wanna to get to at the bottom, time-lapse settings. Check this out. Now, there's nothing more fun than watching illustration come to life. You, there's an artist you're really interested in learning from, you love watching their process, and so they record a time-lapse video when they're doing a drawing, and they post it on Instagram or whatever. But sometimes they're a little blurry, they don't look so good. So check this out. We have in Fresco settings for your time-lapse, where you can choose if you want a low, medium, or high resolution export for that time-lapse, and you can have up to 4K, 4096 by 4096 um, resolution. So that is a super crisp, ultra high resolution export for that document. Pretty fancy stuff. So that is there for you to play with. Of course, keep in mind, if you are exporting a really, really high res video and you're doing an illustration over the course of like six hours, okay, that high res time lapse is gonna eat up quite a chunk of memory on your device. If you're using like an iPad, for example, so that video that you save is gonna eat up some memory. So once you export that thing and you post it online or save it uh, elsewhere, maybe to the cloud somewhere, I would recommend, you know, when you've got it safely stored somewhere else, maybe you wanna delete that thing. Unless you have one of those two terabyte, uh, is it one terabyte, two terabyte iPads they make now? In which case, probably don't have to worry about it too much. Okie dokie, Russa, now. Let's jump out of this for a minute and come over here to input. You see on the left, I have general. Those are my general settings. Now on to input. All right. Everybody draws differently, right? Some people have a heavy hand. Some people have a light hand, a light touch, a heavy touch. So 
one of the things I like in Fresco is we have this option. You see um, the third one down, it says adjust stylus pressure. You just tap on that. Now don't worry about this little fella here. This is your pressure curve, okay? Now only a lot of experienced digital artists will understand what that is and how to use it and so on. Um, but it is there, so for the more advanced users, you have that there. Uh, and what this is going to do is it's going to affect how Fresco responds to the pressure you use with your stylus, okay? And so this is great if you have a really, really light touch. See this little slider up here? I can just slide it all the way to the lightest setting. And then I can make a few lines over here and see how that feels, okay? And then I can slide it all the way to the heaviest setting, make a few lines and see how that feels. Very different. And everything in between. So we have got you covered in that respect. And this is great. So you can customize even how it feels to draw. All right, just want to point that out for everybody since it's very handy. All right, now meanwhile, you have options for whether or not you want your finger to serve as a paintbrush. So if you select a paintbrush, instead of just using the stylus, if you want to just draw with your finger, you have that option and you have settings. You can draw with the brush. You could make your finger the eraser. So you could be drawing and then you can take your finger and every time you touch with your finger and scrub around on the canvas, it becomes an eraser. You can do that. Uh, you can erase with a brush and you can set it to gestures only so that it only works to do the gestures. Now that's what I like because I don't use my finger for much of anything. Occasionally I'll use my finger to smudge. That's really fun. Um, but we'll talk about that later. All right, now, disable undo redo gesture. Okay, when we get to gestures, I'm gonna show you the basic gestures. If you decide you don't want to use those gestures, you do have the option to disable them, okay? Uh, and there are some other options here, um, touch shortcut settings. I'm not gonna get into those because again, they're a little bit more advanced and I think the default setup for Fresco is what we wanna to cover today. Keep those things as they are. And if you wanna get into the nitty gritty, uh, then that's something you can investigate. Alrighty. And here under brushes, now this is an interesting one. Sometimes you wanna see what is the shape of the brush I'm using and as I move it around the screen, what does it look like? You have the option to put the brush stamp on, right? the shape of that brush you're using. There's so many brushes in Fresco. And this can be helpful for orienting yourself and deciding how big it is and being able to really visualize that. So we'll leave that on, okay? All right, now you've got some other stuff, such as your nice uh, info, your account, right? And about Fresco, more help. We have all that wonderful stuff right there. We have experimental action here. Now this is gonna be something that you guys aren't gonna get into. And the internal stuff, that's for me only. Oh, fun, 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 fun. All righty, now let's get to drawing and painting. I know it's a long intro. I just wanna make sure everybody sees all this. Um, Mallory, I didn't know it was available on Windows. It is Mallory, yes, lots of Windows devices, dozens and dozens of different uh, brands and models and everything. Um, check it out, it's not available for all of them. I mean, I know there's a certain amount of their hardware specs uh, that are required, but please check it out. In fact, I tested it out on a Windows device with a Wacom uh, tablet and boy, it was perfect, no problemo. So check it out. Um, any other questions, let's see. The old Surface Pro. Yeah, I think the oldest Surface Pro is not compatible. Surface Pro is made in the last two, three years. Those should all be fine. Um, I wish there was a desktop version, says Kurt. Well, for certain Windows devices, that works. And then um, I'm sure you guys have been seeing some of the news coming out of Apple about certain things. So that's that's all I'll say about that. But, uh, you know, good things are in the future. Kyle, can you please move your mouse to the side? Why, certainly. How's that? You like that? There you go. Sorry, I forgot that was there, gang. Alrighty, uh, you're grateful for this deep dive into Fresco and Features. Thank you, Christine. Uh, you just installed it, Mallory, and it's working? Great! You're set, you're all set to go. Well, here you go, let's follow along then. So, here we go. Top left, well, what do you suppose we have? Of course it's gonna be brushes, because this is a drawing and painting app, so we kick it off right off the bat with brushes. No surprise there, right? And we're gonna start with the very first thing that happens when you open the app. If you tap on brushes, you're gonna come right down to this category, sketching, which is highlighted. And if I tap on that, you'll see, ah, the pencil. So 
Right when you open the app, you don't even have to do anything. The brush tool is already selected and you just start drawing right away. Okay, that's how it's gonna work for you. Now, let's talk a little bit about this default pencil in Fresco. The default pe uh, pencil works as you would expect a pencil to work. What I mean by that is if I'm holding the pencil, I'll just switch my view here for just a moment so you can really see what I mean. If I'm holding my pencil more upright and I'm drawing on the canvas like so, well, just like a regular pencil, I'm using more of the tip of the pencil, which makes a finer line, okay? Now, if I were to take my pencil and angle it down this way, right, and I start shading maybe, well, then I'm using more of the side of that graphite, okay, which means I'm get, covering more territory with the graphite and I'm gonna make a wider stroke. So, of course, in fresco, that's exactly what happens with the pencil. So I'll just demonstrate here quickly. All right, so I'm gonna take the pencil and just draw a little profile here. Oh, and by the way, of course, the pressure you exert um, is going to affect the lightness of the mark you make, as you would expect, right? There we go. Okay, so here we have a little face. Now, let's say I want to add some tone to that face. I can take my pencil and I can shade. So like this eyebrow, I want to just add a little tone right there. And maybe inside here. Maybe under the nose, or maybe a little bit right there. So I'm just now using the side of the pencil to add that tone and I can come back over and do some line work over the top of that. All right, add a little bit of tone to the lips. So you get the idea, right? That's as simple as it is right there. That's all you gotta do. So this is how I would use a regular pencil with uh, physical media out there in the physical world, right? Using the natural media tools. But we've decided to emulate that experience very nicely here with this pencil. And so that's what you get with this, all right? Now, everybody, again, like I said, draws differently. Some people have a heavier touch, a lighter touch, right? So another thing you can do is you can say, well, look, I like working with a, let's say a 2H or a 4H pencil when I'm drawing. I, I like to draw with a really hard uh, pencil, which means it's gonna make a lighter mark, right? More precision. Well, guess what? All you have to do, and this is with any of the pixel brushes in Fresco, and these are all pixel brushes here. See, it says pixel brushes right there. With any of these brushes, if I just come on down all the way to the bottom of that toolbar on the left, you'll see here, I have this little handy pull away bar. Okay, now you, you can pull it away if you like, or you can leave it where it is. All right, but your menus in Fresco are really, really um, customizable. And I'll show you that in a second. But what I wanted to get to is right here, you're gonna see the size of your brush. See that? Now I can make it bigger or smaller. And that's a pencil, I like to keep it small, right? But you can make it bigger if you want, or smaller. But right here, this is, this is crucial, the flow. So this basically is telling um, Fresco how much of the medium you're using, whether it's graphite or paint or whatever, charcoal, maybe it's pastels, um, how much of that medium is flowing out of the tool that you're drawing with at a given time? Is it gonna be really rapid? Is it gonna be a lot of it? So with pencil, for example, it's just gonna be a ton of graphite I'm depositing really, really fast all the time, which makes that really dark, right? Well, no, I wanna go lighter. So if I bring my flow down to say, oh, you know, 20%, and then I draw with it again, well, look, look how much lighter that mark is. And for me to build it up to a dark mark takes a lot longer. I really have to scrub, scrub, scrub in color to get to a full black. So if you're used to drawing with technical pencils or pencils that are on the lighter side, right? That's a, a, um, a harder lead or graphite. Uh, we still say lead, even though they don't put any lead in those things. 
um, then that's what you do is just bring the flow down. So essentially what you have here with just this one default tool is a range of pencils from like a 6H all the way up to a 8B, right? Which is if I pull it all the way up to the top, I mean, we are drawing dark. Look at that. That is a dark mark. Da -da -da -da, no Harry Potter jokes, please. Or, you know, make them. I don't care. My daughter's name is Hermione, so you can tell I'm a fan, right? Russell time. Okay, so anyway, look at that. You have the ability to control the flow of the medium you're using. Very simple. Now, you might be wondering, since we're here with this little area, this is our brush settings, right? You might be wondering what the squiggly line is underneath the flow. Open that up for a second. This is smoothing. And one of the things about drawing in a digital environment using digital tools is, especially when you're first starting out, it's a bit of an adjustment. Now, drawing directly on the screen certainly helps. It's a lot easier than it used to be when you were drawing on a tablet that was separate, where you were drawing marks, but you weren't looking at the tablet. You were looking at a screen elsewhere. And so that disconnect was something to get used to with your brain. Um, but nevertheless, even when you're drawing directly on a screen, you've got plastic on glass. This is a whole new experience. Sometimes you need a little bit of assistance to keep your line work nice and, and uh, smooth and controlled. And we offer that, and that's what smoothing is. So the value of smoothing, the, the more you crank that baby up, the more the line you draw is going to be smoother. It's going to be basically getting some assistance from Fresco on the back end to take any curves that you're drawing, curvilinear passages, and it's going to kind of smooth them out for you. Now, this can be really handy for somebody who's doing lettering, a very precise kind of technical drawing, for example. So you can play with those values as well and see how that goes for you. All right. So that, look, we just covered all that stuff with just the pencil alone, but that's handy. It's good to know about how that pencil works. It's good to get a feel for it. And, you know, I use it more than anything else because I'm always sketching before I do anything else, before I paint, before I ink. Uh, and I love the way this pencil feels. Um, it's really great. All right, so I can crank that smoothing back down because uh, that's not how I normally draw with a pencil, right? Let's zoom back out to 100. There we go. Oh, and here's the thing talking about um, touch shortcuts, right, for, for Fresco. Let's say I zoom all the way in like this. Now I wanna get back to my 100% full canvas view. Well, all you have to do is take your fingers and you pinch the screen like that. Give it a little pinch and everything snaps back to the 100% view. And that's a nice handy thing too. Same thing if you zoom out, just pinch it and bam, it just pops right back up. All right, let's see, any questions or comments? Da, 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 da. Clever says, I fool with the brush settings all the time and appreciate the reset function being so handy. Well, I'm glad you brought that up. I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, because right here, no matter which brush you're using, okay, doesn't matter if it's the pen, the pencil, or any of the other hundreds of brushes we have, check this out. At the very bottom, which is the very next little bit I'm going to get to here, we have smoothing, right? We went flow, smoothing, and now brush settings. Well, at the very bottom of the brush settings, you'll see this icon. There's a, a curved arrow over a line. When I tap on that, it snaps me right back to the default settings for that brush. In case I screw things up so badly and I want to get back to how things are supposed to look, well, I can do that very easily. Okay. Alrighty. Now, by the way, brush settings, I'm going to cover those tomorrow. This is a two part stream. So in part one, I'm just going to go over the basic tools and the setup for the app. Part two, I'm going to get into a more deep dive on some of the more advanced features and ways you can customize it as well. So that's tomorrow at the same time. That's 1030 AM Eastern. I believe that's uh, what 730 in the morning Pacific. So you have to wake up at the crack of dawn. Alrighty. Now, let's go back to our brushes. So, that's the pencil. Now in the default, um, in this uh, sketching section, we also have a nice default pen. And if you've ever used a sort of felt tip pen that you buy from um, a drugstore or a hardware store or any of those places, right, stationery store, this pen feels, well, like those pens, right? Let's set that back to its default because I've been tinkering with that lately. Um, and let me show you what it looks like. There it is, it's a nice pen. 
Now what's cool about this pen is every time you make a mark, see that? It deposits a little bit of ink right there at the beginning and at the end of the stroke if you hang out for a little while, which is exactly what happens with a real pen. Pretty neat, right? But you'll also notice something. If I draw quickly, the line throughout the middle will get thinner. This is because we have tied behaviors of this brush to velocity. The specific behavior is the diameter of the brush. All right, so the stroke that you're making, whether it's thin or thick, has to do with not only pressure, so if I use really heavy pressure and bear down, I'll get a fatter line than if I use light pressure, but also depending on how quickly I draw, so here I'm drawing slowly and then when I speed it up, the line gets thinner. So this is very much like how a real pen behaves and I encourage you to play around with this. But I like this pen for more than anything, actually, is handwriting. I like to take notes in Fresco. I'll use Fresco as a note taking device when I need to and just write down some, some notes, jot it down, takes my handwriting really well. I mean, that just feels great. And uh, I'll use it for that. So, but also people love to draw with it, of course. This is after all a drawing application. Now I've made a lot of uh, marks here on the page. And before we get to more about the brushes, I wanna quickly say, well, what happens now if I wanna save this for some reason? I wanna work on something else now in Fresco in the same document, but I don't want my canvas all cluttered. Well, that brings us to layers. If I pop over to the right side of the document, we have our layers panel, okay. Now, here's the first layer that you're uh, gonna start with. This is your background layer. In Fresco, we automatically set a background layer for you, but we also are very courteous by creating a separate layer right above it, which is where you'll begin drawing. And this is to prevent that part, that horrible um, thing that happens sometimes when you launch a new document and you start drawing right away and you realize only later after you want to transform it or make some change to it that you've been drawing on the background layer all along. We've all been there. It's very painful. Um, we've had nightmares about it. No more, no more. When you launch a document in Fresco, there's automatically a separate layer for you to draw on, and so you're not gonna have that problem. But the background layer is of course included if you wish to fill it with color, if you wish to paint on it, or uh, simply hide or show it. Which brings me to this area to the right of the layers. And these are your layer actions, basic layer actions. So if I wanna hide the background layer, I just tap on the little eyeball icon in the middle there. And now it's gone. I bring it back. And like I said, I want to do some more drawing now, but I don't want to draw on the same layer. It's getting a little cluttered. So I can hide that. But where do I draw now? Well, I'll make a new layer. And the little plus button that you see above that eyeball, if I tap on that, makes a new layer. Simple as that. Okay. And so here we have a new layer to play around with. And I want to quickly now show you how to navigate these pixel brushes. So there are a bunch of categories, okay, from basic all the way down to sketching. You see with the, uh, the number of brushes in each category to the right of it. So basic, it says eight brushes, charcoal has seven, comics 13, and so on. Lots and lots of brushes here. Um, now I believe two of these categories are not available in the free version, comics and effects perhaps, uh, if I'm getting my facts straight. Otherwise, you still have a good 80 or so brushes to fool around with. And um, so let's go and just quickly look. Every time I tap on a category, see what happens? It pulls up the individual brushes in that category. If I want to draw with a charcoal pencil, you know, then I can just go ahead and do that. La, 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 la. feels great, okay. Charcoal pencil. Um, we have vine charcoal in there, so that's great for anyone doing gesture drawing, or if you've ever done any life drawing, you know that vine charcoal is uh, the thing that really makes that a great experience. So we've got some nice vine charcoal options. I think there's six of those, or maybe five. All right, so different charcoal brushes. Then under comics, you have all kinds of things. You have cross hatching brushes, look at that. That'll save you a bunch of time. Um, you have half tones, and not only do you have half tones, but they are responsive to pressure. So I can go from a very faint tone all the way up through a dark tone like that with each and every one of those. And that is really handy. So anybody doing any comics work, having to work with half tones, you wanna to get a consistent tone across one area and then you wanna get it to amp up a little bit, get a little darker. 
and then a little darker, right? It's the only place you can do this, right here in Fresco. Pressure responsive halftone brushes. All, right, all the way down to the Kirby Crackles. This is inspired, of course, by the great Jack Kirby and his crackle, they call it, this cool thing he would do in the background of his illustrations all the time. Very, very popular. Um, and some inking tools as well. So you see here in just these two categories, we're already getting crazy with the amount of marks that you can make in this application, okay? So what if you've done something that doesn't matter and you don't wanna simply hide it and make a new layer? You just wanna clear it all away. Well, look what happens if I tap on any layer, okay? It gives me some options. Now, if I tap on a layer that's visible, holy cow, look at all these actions that we have. Well, the third one down says clear layer. If I tap on that, everything gets de uh, deleted, erased. I don't think about it anymore. And that's wonderful, especially if you know things are getting cluttered and you don't need something anymore and you don't want to make a billion layers. Although, like I said up front, no layer limits in Fresco. Just keep on making layers until your machine burns up in a horrible flaming mess. And we will not be held responsible for that. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, anyway, you have dry media that includes content crayon, graphite, and all kinds of stuff. You can play with this on your own. You can find all these brushes and see what they do, right? Um, you have FX brushes. Now, check this out. What if I say grab the uh, foliage brush, okay? And get a nice green color. And let's say I'm just, I'm just, I've just opened Fresco and I'm playing around and I say, oh, oh, I like what this does. Oh, I like this. This is cool. And maybe you think, I'm going to use that on a daily basis. Well, right next to the brush's name, you see this little star over here? If I just tap on that, it becomes blue. What that means is it has now been added to my favorites, my brush favorites. Because think about it, if you have hundreds and hundreds of brushes, because you can work with, by the way, all your libraries of brushes that you own, you can import brush sets. Uh, very easily, and I'll show you how to do that. Um, you have all these brushes, but maybe there are 10 or 12 that you use all the time, day in and day out. They're your absolute favorites, right? You'd, you'd grab them with you if you're running out of a burning building. Well, look, now it's been added to my favorites. There it is, foliage number one. So anytime I open my brushes panel, all I have to do is tap on favorites, and I'll see the list of brushes I want to be in there. You don't want it to be a favorite anymore? Just tap on the star again. All gone. Simple as that. You want to add it again, just tap on the star. Ba ba. Okay. So that is really handy. Okay. So maybe there's some brushes that you just think, I, I can't live without these things. I got to have them in my life. Or maybe for a certain project, you're doing something that involves a lot of leafy stuff. So you've got all the foliage brushes. Like you've got your leafy lines and your foliage brushes. And you're like, yeah, I want all of these and I'm going to be using them all the time for this one project. Well, just go ahead and favorite them all. Okay. Favorite, favorite, go ahead and favorite that leafy line. And now when I go to my favorites, all four of them are ready to go. Every time I open this document, I say, oh yeah, I just wanna work with these. And you're all set. You can clear them away anytime you want. Very customizable. Okay, alrighty. So we have an ink, of course, plenty of ink options, um, right up even to an ink roller. So if you've ever done any work with like a brayer and an ink roller, you can do this. And I like to, with this brush, go ahead and demonstrate one of my favorite things about our handy dandy touch modifier. Remember that guy? This is this little circle I'm dragging around here with my finger. Check this out. Any brush you're working with, right? Now this brush has a lot of texture and has a really distinct kind of a look to it, right? Let's say I want to do some erasing. Well, normally if I grab the eraser, which is the fourth tool down here with brushes, and I'll get to all those categories of brushes, and then here's your eraser. Well, if I start erasing, it feels like I'm erasing with a tool that has nothing to do with the tool that made the marks in the first place, okay? So there's kind of a disconnect there. So this is what's great about this little touch modifier. If I'm drawing with a brush like this one, okay, which has its own weird, weird kind of look, I can hold the touch modifier down and all of a sudden the brush I'm using instantly becomes an eraser. So you instantly have this option to work with additive and subtractive um, marks, right? And it all happens with that little touch modifier. Let's say that you don't want to uh, hold it down all day and you say, okay, I'm actually going to go through now this time where I'm going to be erasing a lot with this brush. Just take your finger and double tap on the touch modifier and that'll lock it in 
as an eraser. Okay, there you go. Ready for it to go back to normal, double tap it again, and you're back to painting. Just like so. So that is a pretty handy little thing. That works, of course, for any brush at all, right? So even let's say if I go to the dry media and I've got something like a graphite, okay? So I'm drawing with some graphite and that's of course got its own distinctive look, right? Just hold down that touch modifier. Now I'm erasing with graphite. Very nice. So that way you're keeping consistency with the marks that you're making as well as the marks that you're taking away, okay? So nice use of the touch modifier there and I like people to be aware of that. Okay, so anyway, the pixel brushes, there are plenty of them, lots to play with. There's one category I wanna call out and that is the mixer brushes. Mixer brushes are different from the average pixel brush in that they also will blend paint in addition to painting. So not only will you be making new marks, but if there's already a color of any kind of a mark on the, on the canvas, you will blend with that. So why don't I clear this away for a moment? So we'll tap on clear and I'll open the mixer brushes. Now you see we have 12 of those, all right? And I'm going to select the blocky mixer. It's the second one right here. And let's grab a color like uh, red. I'll just put some color down here. Now, so far it looks like an average brush. Nothing interesting is happening. But I'll grab another color here, this yellow. I'll paint over here to the side. Again, nothing. What happens if I come over here? Oh, look at that. See that? All of a sudden, we're mixing color and we're getting that nice orange in the middle. Now that's pretty cool. So that's what mixer brushes do. They paint and they blend simultaneously. Very handy. And there we go. There's something I want to say about um, the colors here. If I were doing a traditional sort of a painting um, and I wanted to mix some colors on my palette, let's say I want to work with some primaries and build myself a little palette. Okay, so let's say I want to have a little um, red, I put some yellow down there, okay, and then I grab some kind of a little blue and say, all right, got my primaries. And then I want to mix them together. So, you know, put a little bit of blue into that yellow and mix up a little green, like so, right? Well, now, how do I take that green and add it to my, my, my uh, canvas? So this is where we get into one of the most useful tools and that is the eyedropper tool. And the eyedropper tool allows you to select color from the canvas. And in Fresco, it's so easy to call up the eyedropper. You just take your finger and hold anywhere on the canvas and look, it just pops right up and I can just drag around. And when I come over a color, see what happens? It shows me that color in that window. So let's say I want that green, right? So wherever the crosshairs are, right? I just kind of go over that and I say, there, that's the color I want and then I paint with that, it automatically switches that color to your active color that you're painting with. Pretty cool, right? So then I could go ahead and tap over here, grab that blue, mix it a little bit with that red, and then I can select that nice purple. And if you look at the top right of the screen, I'm also getting the hue, saturation, and brightness of that color being displayed for me in real time, which is really handy. Okay, you can paint with that purple. So then I can build up a canvas this way. You want to make some nice neutrals, go ahead and grab that purple and mix it with that green. Right? And you're going to get some really nice grays and you know that those are going to be harmonious with your palette because they're mixed from that set of primaries you were using. So that is the eyedropper tool. Just touch and hold anywhere on the canvas. Okay? Now, most applications stop there, right? They have an eyedropper tool. You select your canvas color and you keep on painting. But, you know, we here at Adobe decided that wasn't good enough. We wanted to give you the ability to sample multiple colors at the same time from your canvas. So that's where our friend, the touch modifier comes in handy once again, because check this out. If I hold the touch modifier down with one finger and then with my other finger, I call up that eyedropper tool Okay, do you see what happened in the top right corner? All of a sudden it says multiple colors 
Yeah, it's no longer giving me that one solid value, right? No, multiple colors. That means whatever is under the eyedropper, okay, is gonna be selected all at once. So when I let go, check this out. If I look at my color wheel on the far left, this little guy right here, see that? It's got blue and yellow in it. And the next time I paint, whoa, what's going on? Both of those colors are on my brush just as they were selected. Now, of course, this is gonna open up all kinds of wonderful options for all you painters out there who do this with natural media. You may be wondering, well, what if I wanna select a lot of the area of the canvas? And you know, the eyedropper is only so big, right? I can only select these together. Okay, don't worry, don't worry. Check this out, we made it so easy. Just zoom out, just zoom out. The farther away you zoom, the more you select, right? So look, now I'm selecting red and yellow all together. Zoom back in, I paint with that. Whoa, crazy. Okay, so sky's the limit, folks. You can do whatever you want with that multicolor eyedropper. And tomorrow, I will show you some nifty tricks with it for making your own brushes and doing all kinds of neat stuff. But I just wanna call that to your attention because it's a pretty cool feature and it's only found here in Fresco and it really opens the doors for some pretty fantastic stuff. All right, so that was mixer brushes and the multicolor eyedropper. Mixer brushes are in that pixel brush category. Now I'd like to move over to the next category of brushes here. And that is just below mixer, uh, uh, sorry, pixel brushes. We have what are called live brushes. So I just tap on that. And we have two categories here, watercolors and oils. Let's start with the watercolors. And I will select the watercolor wash flat brush, the third one down here. And I'm gonna go back to a just a regular blue color here. Now, when I open my color wheel, this is your color wheel. This shows you the color that's actively on your brush. And you can see I can easily move around to get different colors. On the inside, you're working with the saturation and value. So the, the brightness, whether it's dark or light, okay? And how saturated the color is. Desaturated, very saturated. So from right to left, from left to right, you are working with saturation of your color. And then if you're moving up and down, you're working with brightness or value, okay? What if you wanna to change to a different color? Well, look, we have this outer ring and that'll help you right there because then you can move around to any hue and you can select color and then I can play with that. All right. Um, and down here at the bottom of this uh, color panel, which by the way, I can tap on it and I can move it and lock it. Maybe I wanna have it up at all times. I don't wanna to have to tap on it to grab it. I can snap it over there, bam. That's really lovely. Or I can have it hovering over here somewhere. Put it anywhere you like, okay? You don't want it to be out and about. Just hit the little X in the top right corner, close it out. It's still over here, don't worry. But at the very bottom, we have recent colors. This is so useful because a lot of times, you know, you do a painting and you know, you've changed the color 15 times and now you're like, oh wait, what was that yellow I used 15 steps ago? Well, don't worry, we'll save it for you, okay? Right here. All right, so I'm going back to this blue with my watercolor brush. I've selected the watercolor wash flat brush. I'll make it a little bit smaller. It's pretty massive right now. And uh, let's talk about watercolors. We wanted to keep watercolors in fresco as simple as they could be. If any of you out there paint with watercolors, you know that a watercolorist is concerned with only two things. How much water is on my brush and how much paint is on my brush. And any combination of those two values is going to make it possible for you to get this incredibly wide range of effects that we all know and love with watercolors. And so that's what we've done here in Fresco. We have made it so that you have how much paint's on the brush, and this is that flow. Remember that? We pulled up that flow slider earlier. This is gonna control how much paint is on the brush. So you're gonna put just a tiny bit of paint. You know, you just bring that flow down. Maybe you wanna just load it up with paint. Bring the flow up. 
How much water is on the brush? You want to saturate it, just make it soaking wet. There you go. Bring that water flow all the way up to 100. You want to just have it be a tiny bit, tiny bit damp. Bring that water flow down. All right, or anywhere in between. All right, now check this out. When I paint with watercolor in fresco, look at that. You can see the paint moving on the canvas. Now that is gorgeous. Make a new stroke. Look at that. See how it flows? The water pushes the paint around and flows right to that new area that's become wet there. And you get these beautiful textures and patterns created by that real wet media. And of course, you want to blend colors. This is going to work beautifully. Just come right up here along the edge. Oh, wow. I love it. I, I never get tired of watching the paints blend here. This is so fun. And one of the best things about working in uh, Fresco is that everything is being run off of the GPU, all the, all the graphics and effects. So that means you're not going to deal with a lot of brush lag. So I could pop this up to a 512 pixel brush and just paint along, right? And I'm not going to have to worry about any of that. Now let's grab a nice, look at this bright green, mix that in with that yellow. That looks pretty. Okay, so several things we can cover about the watercolors. First and foremost, you have five different options, with different brushes to paint with, all right? And tomorrow I'll show you how you can expand the amount of watercolor brushes you have pretty much infinitely, which is a pretty neat trick. Um, but we even have things like spatter. So you paint with wet spatter. That's really neat, okay? Um, and if I bring that water flow way, way down, I want you to see the difference when I paint with it. Totally different kind of brush stroke. So you'll notice as I paint, the, the paint will not move quite as far as when the paint is really, really, really wet. Same goes for the flow. If you bring the flow down and you bring your water flow down and then paint, see that? barely any movement whatsoever. Now, if I paint into an area that was really, really wet before, we actually remember that. So if I know that this area, for example, was a very saturated area, then the paint that happens out here, okay, is barely gonna blend. But once it comes in an area where there was more water, you're gonna get more blending, okay? So you get all the effects you would expect from real watercolors right here. You can also, at will, dry the paper whenever you wish. Now that's one of the layer actions. So if I pull up in this layer, remember you just tap on a layer and you get your actions. At the very bottom, if you've been using watercolors, this option presents itself, dry layer. Tap on dry layer. Now this is interesting. What we've done here is we've made it so that the layer is dry. However, you can still, within the boundaries of the area that you paint the next stroke, mix color. That might sound a little confusing, but I'll show you what I mean. Now, normally, if I were to take this blue and paint over an area, okay, with a totally dry paper, you wouldn't be able to pick up the color that's underneath, right? But that's not what happens in fresco. You can actually still mix colors, but the borders, the edges, of the paint that you are using, right? Of the, sorry, the stroke that you're painting, pardon me, remain fixed and they remain visible and clear. So this gives watercolorists a whole new way to work. In other words, you could still keep your blending of colors uh, as an option without the edges of the strokes you paint being uh, diffused, right? And blending in as well. So it's another level, level of control. And of course, because we're in a digital painting environment, you can create new layers. So if I simply tap on that little plus sign over on the right with my layers and make a new layer, well now I could paint straight over that. I've got some transparency, of course, because it is watercolor, but I can make that opaque. And now I'm painting with watercolors on top of watercolors. But here's something really nifty. If I tap on the layer, one of the options we have for layers is, you know, let's say you have 10 layers and you think, okay, I only need two or one. You can merge layers together. So if you look here, 
right above dry layer, the very bottom of my layer actions, you have this option merge down. If you merge two watercolor layers, all of the water mixing properties are still there. So I start painting here. I can start to let me make some more water. Sorry, I forgot I was using very little water. There we go. I could start to take those edges and make them soft and blend them away. Okay, so now you have another whole way to work where you can reactivate color and do stuff like this, which is pretty fun. Okay, and let's take it a step further. I'll clear this away. All right, put some more color down right here. All right, now we can see the edges of our paint that we've just, for the shape that we just painted, okay? And they're pretty clean, as you would expect when you paint with wet paint on dry paper. That's what you get. But anybody out there who's a watercolorist knows that if you put the paint down, and if it's semi-dry, or sometimes in some cases, depending on the quality of the paper you're using and how much water, um, even if the paint is totally dry, you can actually get a wet brush and you can scrub away on the edges of the, of the shape you painted and you can wet that paint again and you can soften an edge. It's a very cool watercolor uh, take, right? Uh, pardon me for a second, I see a question. Is there a fine tip watercolor brush? Absolutely, absolutely, check it out. The watercolor round detail. It's the very first one right there. All right, you can go like this and you can size it down and do really, really fine fine work, right? You can reduce the amount of water, increase the flow, get it really skinny, and do this. And I'm zoomed in, by the way, so here. You wanna do that? No problem, you're all set. Yes, we have everything you need, okay? All right, so back to that other brush. Um, so why don't we do that technique I just described right now? We can use pure water, so I'll just grab water. Now, how do you do that? Look at the color wheel. The top left of the color wheel, you'll see a white circle. That's if you want to use pure white to paint with. At the bottom left, you'll see a black circle. And then at the bottom right, you're going to see a clear circle. Tap on that. Once you tap on the clear circle, you have sucked all the pigment out of your brush, but you haven't gotten rid of the water. So I'm just going to use a little bit of water here and make my brush a little smaller. And on the right edge of this shape, all right, I'm just gonna touch it with the brush. See that? Just touching it. I'm basically just tapping on my canvas, okay? And you can see what's happening. It's adding water to that area. And it is then making that paint spread out and softening that edge. And if you want it to be even softer, use the watercolor wash soft brush. That's what it's great for, softening edges as well as painting, of course. But now I'm doing the bottom left here, just softening that up. So you can paint with pure water. And what we decided was, well, gosh, it'd be stupid just to, to limit this kind of uh, behavior and special effect to the watercolors. Why not make it possible to do this with any pixel brush, with whatever's on the canvas? And so you can, yes, you can. So. If I just grab, let's say, an inking brush, and I'll grab this blotty inker and make a little line here. Da, 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 da. Okay, there it is. You notice I'm on the same layer as the watercolors, by the way. You can do that here. I'll come back to my watercolor brush. And remember, I want to get rid of all the paint. So just tap on that. Goodbye. Alrighty. And now, I'm gonna to just touch this line that I just drew. See that? It took it and it just, it wet it and made it do that cool thing you see where you ever see an ink wash drawing where the artist was drawing with pen and ink and then they grabbed a watercolor brush and they did a little wash but the ink wasn't totally dry and it just kind of dampened a little bit of that area that they were drawing with. Well, you can do that in fresco, right? You can even like scrub and scrub and scrub and scrub and go nuts until eventually you just wet the whole thing. All right, but this gives you some pretty nifty options as well. Okay. And so there you go, watercolor and fresco, pretty nifty. Okay, now let's check out the oils. 
The oils in fresco behave just as you would expect oils to behave, which means we once again have the flow slider controlling how much paint you have on the brush. Um, only in this case, it's more like how thick the paint is. Let's grab a nice bright red. Uh, there we go. And I'm using a standard round brush here. The other thing you can control is how much it mixes with the colors that are already on the canvas. Sometimes you want it to mix a lot. Sometimes you don't want it to mix at all. And I'll show you what I mean. So just put a little stroke down here. So there's my red paint. If I zoom in, I hope you can see this. The thickness of the paint is actually visible in fresco. Using a light touch with light pressure, I just graze the surface of the canvas. See that? Got that nice canvas texture. If you choose to paint without canvas texture, you can always go to your brush settings right down here and you can get rid of that canvas. Just say none, okay? I like the canvas. All right, but if you bear down, you can really use a lot of pressure and see I get nice chunky brush strokes. All right, let's grab another color and mix it in there. That's where you see the magic happen. Oh yeah, beautiful. Isn't that nice? But sometimes I don't want it to mix that much, okay? Sometimes I say, well, actually, I don't want to pick up all that red and make that nice luscious orange. I don't want to do that, okay? I'm undoing, which is simply taking two fingers and tapping on the screen. You want to undo, just take two fingers, tap on the screen. Uh-oh, what if you want to redo? Three fingers, tap on the screen. Redo, 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 undo, 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 simple. Now let's say I want to use that yellow color and I don't want it to mix at all. I'll just tap on that mixing slider and pull it down to zero. Problem solved. See that? No mixing occurring. So for all you oil painters out there who have to wait three to four days for your paints to dry in your canvas, I got good news for you here. You don't have to do that anymore, okay? But again, just like with watercolor, here's another cool thing. I could just make a new layer and paint on top, right? So you wanna keep the, the mixing values as they are, fine. Just keep the mixing really high wherever you want it, okay? And um, grab that red, do some blending here. Might look like I'm painting everything on the same layer, but I'm not, they're on two separate layers. And later I might want to merge those layers so I can merge them down. And now they're all going to mix together again, right? Pretty cool. Now with the oils, you can also paint with no pigment. I know that sounds weird, but here's what it does. If I take away the pigment, remember tapping on that little transparent pixel there, okay? Then what happens is any area I touch of the canvas, it's going to pick up that color and it lets me pull it around and use like the oil painting effects with it. And I know you can't tell, but right now I'm drawing at the top right corner. Hopefully you can see that little stamp moving around. Notice nothing's happening because remember, I don't have any paint on my brush. There's none there. All right, the moment I move it over here though and grab some of that color, look what happens. Whoops, now I'm painting. So that could be pretty nifty for doing some uh, mixing effects and some other things like that, not bad. Alrighty, so oil paints, watercolors, these are the live brushes in Fresco, okay? Let's move to the third category of brushes. Make a new layer. And these are so cool, these are vector brushes. We have seven of them, I believe, if not eight, eight uh, vector brushes here. And vector brushes are different from pixel brushes in that the art you create with a vector brush is infinitely scalable. So let's just do this. I'll draw a little, little eye here. Okay. And then I'm going to grab my pixel uh, brush. Remember that very first brush we used, the pencil? Okay. And I'll draw an eye next to that on a separate layer. Because pixel, pixel brushes and vector brushes stay on their own separate layers. And don't worry, Fresco will sort that out for you. It's never gonna let you draw 
with a pixel brush on a vector layer or vice versa. All right, we got two eyes. Now let's zoom in. Now, look at the one I did with the pencil. See all the pixels? Of course you do. It's a pixel brush. Not infinitely scalable. You have to make sure that you're drawing at a size where, you know, for your final um, output, it's going to look nice and crisp. However, look at the vector one. I'm zoomed into 12,800% zoom, no difference. So vector brushes are for creating clean art that is um, really crisp and infinitely scalable. And uh, that's how they work. Okay, so vector brushes do that. And they have a few really special features of their own, which I'll get to tomorrow with the more advanced stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, they are pretty nifty. And we have some special ones we put in Fresco that don't exist in any of our other apps, like the Velocity Taper Brush, which gives you this cool taper at the beginning and the end of the brush stroke, if you wish for it to be there. Have you, you also have this option to tap and hold for a moment before you draw and pull away for a really nice taper as well. So pretty neat stuff happening with the vector brushes as well. All right. Okay, now for today, I just have a couple of more things to talk about. And these are, I'll just hide this for a moment. The smudge tool and the eraser. All right, because these are your painting and drawing basics. And with you know how to add layers, you know how to smudge, you know how to erase and how to paint. You should be good to go for a day before we jump into some other things, okay? So let's talk about smudge. What is smudge? Smudge is another word for blend, all right? I prefer the word blend, but it's the smudge tool because that's what it's been called for years and everyone knows that now. So got to stick with that terminology. Uh, so let's grab a brush like, um, let's say the block stain brush here. It's in the painting category. And uh, this time we'll paint with a pretty little green, greenish blue. Put a little paint down, okay, and then put a little yellow next to it. All right, sometimes you want to blend your colors and you're not using the oils or you're not using the mixer brushes. The smudge tool comes to the rescue. Any of the pixel brushes that we have in Fresco will also function as a smudge tool or as a blending tool. So let's say by default we have our graphite smudge tool, all right. Let's say I want to blend these two areas of color. Well, look, I just do this, just blend them together and that's it. And any brush can be used. So you want to do something crazy, grab a rake brush, for example. Let's grab a rake brush and blend that. See that? It pulls all that green and that yellow. Why is it doing that? Why isn't it blending? Well, here we have strength. So just like you have the flow of your pixel brushes, you have the strength settings for a smudge brush. You crank it all the way up to 100. Well, what it's going to do is if I'm out here and I'm painting, well, nothing's going to happen because I'm not smudging anything, right? But watch what happens as I make contact with that yellow. Okay, what's it doing? It's pulling the white from outside the area with it. Okay, one second. And as I exit out the other side, I've basically just taken white and pulled it into the document. However, the moment I reduce that strength, let's say to like 83 and start smudging, look at the difference. Now it does blending just as before with that pastel one. And so you have a ton of control with the effects that you create with the smudge tool simply by adjusting the strength. All right. So I'm going to crank it up to 99. And you'll see that now I can get the best of both worlds. I can pull some of that white in, but I can also pull some of that green out and then pick up some of that yellow. And you can do some super weird effects with this. All right, sky's the limit. Use your imaginations and see what you can come up with, all right? Another thing about the smudge tool when it comes to really controlling it, let's go back to our pencil for a moment. So I'm just gonna go back to that default pencil. And I'm gonna put some uh, lines down here. One of the things if you've ever drawn with pencil is you like to take your finger or charcoal and smudge what's there on the paper, okay? So what I do is I'll take this smudge tool again and we go back to our dry media category. And the graphite one works nicely for this. See that? I can just smudge around 
But if you feel like the smudge effect is just too strong and adjusting the strength isn't getting you where you want, another thing you can do is open the brush settings. In this case, it says smudge settings, but these work just like brush settings. And you can increase the spacing here. Now what this does is it means that there are fewer instances of that smudging action per stroke. So if I make a nice long stroke, the smudge is gonna kind of be like a little smudge here, a little smudge there, a little smudge here, instead of a rat a tat a tat a tat tat kind of a smudge action, okay? So I'm gonna increase that smudging spacing, right? And now I get much more subtle effects. So you can really control how that's gonna work with the smudge tool, and that's wonderful. Okay, now we'll get to more uh, cool things you can do with that tomorrow as well. Finally, let's talk a little bit about the old eraser. Yep, here we go. The eraser is our pal, the eraser is our friend. We love the eraser. Um, now, in Fresco, we have decided to include a bunch of different erasers because I know it's possible to erase with any brush simply by holding down the touch modifier, and we talked about that. Uh, but it's also nice to have some simple eraser options that you want to use consistently throughout your document. And so what we have are a brush eraser. And what I'll do is use this area that I painted to just demonstrate. See that? That's one kind of eraser. And that's going to respond to the angle you hold it, as well as the pressure that you use when you're drawing and painting. Okay, So that's a really nice way to erase if you're doing painterly stuff. For example, it pairs very nicely with, I'll just grab the painting on that brush here, this canvas brush right here. We'll use a little orange color. So if I'm painting with that, right, it's a lovely brush. We can grab our eraser, and since it's going to also use those painterly strokes, that's really nice to use. Okay. All right. We also have a gritty circle. So this is a circular eraser that has a bit of texture to it. Okay. So that could be handy if you're doing some kind of dry media stuff, right? Maybe over here I could erase some of the pencil. And we have a gritty square. Sometimes you want a hard edged shape to erase with, right? And so the square will give you that. We have the hard round opacity. This is based off a very basic Photoshop brush. You could use it as an eraser here. The more pressure I use, the more I erase. Okay, so I'll use light pressure here and then carry on and get more and more and more and more until I get to the end. I can do cool stuff like that. The hard round variable is the default eraser. This allows you to use pressure to control how much you're erasing, okay? But as you can see, the erasing is going to be 100% removal of the color every single time. So you can't control it with pressure in terms of like how much you're erasing with uh, opacity, okay? The rectangular opacity eraser is what it sounds like. So it's a rectangle shaped eraser with more and more pressure you are going to erase more and more pigment, okay? And the rubber eraser, which is my personal favorite, and I use it all the time with pencils, so I'll come over here and do that, is really nice. I can lighten a whole area just by lightly passing over it. This is what I do with pencil and paper all the time. If I really need to move something, I can just use more pressure and erase it away, but that is a very naturalistic way of working with an eraser. The soft round opacity, what you'd expect, soft. Same behavior as the other with more and more pressure, I'll erase more and more. This is good if you're doing some kind of a gradation in your illustration, like a sky, and you want to fade it down to white or something like that, okay? Soft round variable, same deal, except that you can actually control the size, too, with pressure of what you're erasing. All right, now, with that, I have about uh, six minutes left, seven minutes left. So I want to turn it over and check out how many questions I may have missed here. See if there's anything here that I need to uh, cover to make sure people are okay with this first section of the demo. Tomorrow again, another hour and a half, same time, 10.30 a.m. Eastern. Uh, is there a fine tip watercolor brush? Yeah, that's where we left off. I showed you that. There is indeed. Um, and that's called the round detail brush in the watercolor category right there. Go to watercolors, 
round detail. There it is. How would you outline dry media work with a pencil, says Sanjana. How would you outline dry media work? Hmm. I'm not sure what you mean by outline. Um, if you could help clarify what you mean. Reverb Mike, it's fun to sprinkle salt into wet watercolors. Sure is, and you can you can uh, you can simulate that in fresco very easily and very beautifully. Grab a watercolor brush, and that always shows up best with a dark color. So I'll use I'll use a good bit of water here, put some color down, blend it with another dark color. And let's do this. Check it out. What you do is you just dry the layer and you get your spatter. Okay, make it a little smaller. And I go ahead and I take out the color. Remember that trick? Take out the color, crank up the water, crank up the flow, and just do this. Just spatter it on there. And see what happens? It starts to remove that pigment basically and it pushes the dark areas to the side and you get that cool salt effect, um, which I think is really nifty. I love the way that looks. Just zoom in really close. Hopefully you can see what I'm showing you here and that looks pretty, uh, pretty clear for you. So that's a nifty, nifty effect. Um, You like to use filberts, cool, yes, yes, yes. Thanks, Sean. Yes, I do make the brushes, ha ha. Um, anyone here use a cap active brush stylus for iPad? I don't know what that is. Um, need an tutorial, tutorial on printing from your completed painting. Yes, yeah, so um, look at this. Uh, you wanna export your document, so today, I'll close with exporting, okay? Because I think that's important. I was gonna do it tomorrow, but it's important to do this. The fastest thing you can do is a quick export. So I've done my drawing, I've done my painting. I wanna show the world this painting. If I do a quick export, it'll just save it right to my document, okay? And uh, sorry, right to my device, pardon me. So I can save the image, right? I can airdrop it, I can do whatever. It pulls up that typical menu you get for sharing uh, straight on the uh, iPad. But we have other options as well. Send to Illustrator is a new one and I love it. You just send it right to Illustrator um, and it'll just open on your desktop. It's kind of magical. Uh, you can share a link because it is a cloud PSD, so you can share a link to somebody. Um, and we're gonna cover this tomorrow in more detail, but you can live stream. You can live stream at any moment, right in the middle of doing your artwork to your fans on Behance. You just tap on live stream and it'll call up this, uh, you can see this horrible angle of my face, and you can turn off the camera if you want, you don't have to use it, um, but you can add a title, and you literally just hit go, and bam, it shows up on your Behance page. So how cool is that? And people can tune in, just send them the link, it goes to your, your na username slash videos, and you're live streaming. But more importantly, publish and export. Okay, so how do I do that? Right here. So the share button, publish and export is the very first option. Here's where you get all these wonderful options um, and you can choose. Do you want to export it as a PNG, a JPEG, a PSD, a PDF? If I say PSD, of course, all my layers are going to be um, saved, right? And you can uh, just hit export and it'll ask you where you want to save it. You can save it to your Dropbox. You can save it wherever you like and uh, you're all set. Um, you also have the option to write from Fresco create a Behance project out of this illustration, which is really nifty. Um, capture pattern, we'll, we'll get to that, we'll get to that. Um, and then time-lapse export, which you'll remember, will show you that time-lapse of the whole document from start to finish. And um, you can export it as a high resolution uh, video and just send it straight out there and you'll be in good shape, okay? So there, those are your uh, export options. Very, very nice. Um, and uh, there, are, there's going to be some more options coming along. By the way, I'm not going to get into what they are. I don't think I'm allowed to, but uh, we are going to expand that menu as well. There are going to be some pretty cool things happening with that. Now, you may be wondering what happens to my art when I export it to 
um, Photoshop or wherever, wherever. We, at the beginning of this uh, show, I mentioned that these are cloud PSDs. These are Photoshop documents. So I can open these right away in Photoshop. Nothing changes. Even the watercolor layers and the oil layers, those remain unchanged, unharmed. And in Photoshop, they will show that as long as you leave them alone, do whatever else you want on other layers and mess around, the next time you open those in Fresco, the paint is still wet. So I could save this document, come back to it a year later, open it up, and my watercolors are still watercolors. They're still ooey gooey watercolors and nothing's changed. Okay, pretty cool. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, yeah, and so what happens if you send it to Illustrator? Well, then you're getting vector uh, art and anything that's uh, not vector art, those layers that are not vector art, are just gonna be um, uh, image layers, uh, like pixel-based uh, uh, graphics. Obviously, they're not vector, um, but they will still show up in the document. Um, and we are working out, by the way, I know I heard there were some issues with some bugs with the paths themselves being separated. Uh, that is being worked on and that will be resolved very soon. So don't worry, everyone's aware of that issue and that'll be fixed. And it'd be really handy too uh, to be able to send your work back and forth to Illustrator and Fresco right on the iPad because Illustrator for I, uh, iPad is, is now available, as you know, and it's pretty darn cool. All right, any other quick questions? Let's see. Um, mysterious vector brushes. They're not so mysterious. They're great. Can pixel art be accomplished in Fresco? Uh, when you say pixel art, I, I know what you mean. Um, you're talking about actual pixel art. No, not really. So anyway, folks, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this and I will see you very soon. Um, this has been fun for me and we'll pick this up again tomorrow, same time. So be sure to check it out. Everybody take care and remember to please be kind. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.